Okay, I clicked on a Yammy new video. Is it gonna be Spite or is it gonna be Yammy today? Well, clearly it's me, Spite, but don't worry guys, I didn't take over and Yam's still here. I mean, he did just post a video on Monday and was in yesterday's video, and spoiler warning, he's gonna be in tomorrow's video too. But anyway, I wanted to take some time to talk to you guys about a few handy tips and tricks that I've picked up over my few years of riding and wrenching on motorcycles. Because at some point, you two will have to take that first harrowing adventure into your bike's guts to change a spark plug, swap turn signals, or even just adjust your throttle cable. Working on your bike always feels daunting for the first few times, and that's down to the fact that a lot of new riders probably don't have any previous experience. Instead, you're probably a lot like me when I started, considering an oil change to be a task best left to the pros, because one overly tightened bolt can lead to the whole thing being a write-off. And while that's not entirely true, a mistake in the garage can be very expensive. Stripped bolts can be an enormous pain in the ass, and your Home Depot baby's first mechanics tool set might not have all the things you need to get started. Now before we get into this, let me back up some of my credentials so that those keyboard warriors out there who will knock my work because I use an adjustable crescent wrench in videos will have slightly less ammunition to throw at me. I cut my teeth working on the Harley Davidson Street Series, doing basic maintenance and cosmetic jobs. Then I refined my skills on a Honda 919, tackling all sorts of electrical issues, though I did have a more experienced hand helping me out with that. And I can read, which as we'll get into later is perhaps the single most important skill you can have when you're working on your bike. Okay, now that those folks are busy typing their rebuttals down below, let's dive in. Number one, research. The first few tips all take place before you even pick up a tool, and the first is simply to do some research. First, understand what your bike is. If it's a sport bike, you'll probably need to take some fairings off. Do you know how to do that? If it's a Harley, you might have a smattering of metric and SAE bolts because they built it with whatever they had on the factory floor. So you'll need both in your toolkit. How many oil drain plugs does your bike have? If you don't know the answer to these questions, you need to get on your computer and do some research. Start with YouTube videos. Seriously, every single job I do, I first look for a video of someone else doing it. For example, I recently did the first oil change on my DRZ and I didn't know that it had an internal hidden oil screen. I found a video and watched carefully for all the details of finding, cleaning, and reinstalling that screen before even lifting a wrench. If you can't find a tutorial on YouTube, then search through bike-specific forums. There's thousands of different forums out there, and all of them have something relevant to your task. So take that extra time to really familiarize yourself with what you need to do. This is the part where I tell you to go get a factory service manual, or better yet, a Hanes manual if they make one for your bike. These are invaluable assets since they'll have step-by-step -step instructions, pictures and diagrams, and in the case of Haynes manuals, tips and tricks to make your job even easier. I know it represents a little upfront cost. The factory service manual for my VFR 800 was $70 used from a dealership, and that might seem steep for a paperback book, but the physical edition is the way to go since it can't ever run out of batteries, and you can write in it if you need to. Think about it like this. Knowledge is your superpower in the garage. The more you know, the stronger you are. Take the time to buff yourself up before you jump in. But before I go on, I really need to stop for a second and say a big thank you to all of our members over on yamminoob.co. It's because of all of your support that I get to spend my days making memes and photoshopping Yam's head on classic works of art and tell my family, yeah, it's a real job. If you like what we do here and you want to help us out, click that link down below and head over to yamminoob.co and sign up. You'll get instant access to the best community for motorcyclists on the internet over on our Discord, exclusive content, and lest I forget, you'll be entered to win one of our three giveaway bikes. We've got a KTM Duke 390, Yamaha XSR 700, and Triumph Street Triple up for grabs with maybe a super secret surprise giveaway coming soon. Not to mention our merch site for those of you who want to support us but don't want that subscription life. Head over to yamminoobmerch.com where we've got a special going on right now. If you use the code TRIPLE2020, you'll get 10% off and double entries for the giveaway. Don't miss out because we're only running it for a week, so grab some merch today. Now let's get back to these tips. Time. If I could have a tie for first place, time would be right up there next to doing your research, but since we're all slaves to the almighty list format, it needs to come second. 
When you're about to start a project, set aside a solid chunk of time where you can focus entirely on the bike. Treat the garage like a dojo or a zen garden. When you walk in, you need to block out all external distractions. Make sure that your boss isn't going to call you asking you why you're not at your desk or that your girlfriend knows that you're completely unavailable for that booty call tonight. When you're working on your bike, it's just you and the task at hand. Now you need to be realistic with yourself. Is that oil change really going to take you 30 minutes or are you a normal person and it'll probably take you an hour because you're going to check and recheck your work? You got that sweet slip-on pipe, that shouldn't be a problem, right? I mean, it's just two bolts. Take the old one off, slap the new one on. Well, my young squidlet, let me tell you about a good friend of mine, and his name is Murphy. Now, Murphy could never complete a single task without something going wrong. I mean, how could you possibly burn down your house by changing a light bulb? Well, Murphy found a way. So much so that they named a law after him. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. Plan for your job to take at least twice as long as you think. The easier you think it's going to be, the more frustrating it'll be when you look at your watch and realize that putting on these bar-in mirrors shouldn't have taken you five hours. This one goes hand in hand with the last, and it's to take breaks. Unless you're working on motorcycles for a living, you don't have a deadline and you don't need to force yourself to complete a task. If you're getting frustrated, just pull up a chair, grab a drink, and unwind for a minute. Maybe wash your hands and clean up your workspace. It's easy to drag yourself into a zombie-like rhythm of bolt off, bolt on, but if you're not focused, you're going to start to make mistakes. Did you seat that Allen key into the bolt properly? Nope. Well, now you've got a stripped bolt and you're going to have extra time and expense added to your task. For every hour you spend working on something, budget 10 to 15 minutes to just relax and go over your previous work. Going back to that DRZ oil change I did, that took me two hours because I went slowly and stopped to eat lunch halfway through. I mean, hell, as I say this, my DRZ is still in bits up at Yammy Noob HQ because I needed some time away from it. Relax every now and again, and I guarantee you not only will your project go a lot better, but you'll enjoy the process a whole lot more. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. Oh, come on, Spite. What do you take us for? A bunch of ten-thumbed morons who don't know our asses from our elbows? No, I'm dead serious. Always remember Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. If I had a nickel for every time I tried to loosen a bolt only to realize I was going the wrong way and torquing the ever-loving bejesus out of a bolt, I'd be riding a fat bob among the vineyards of Tuscany right now. Stop and ask yourself, do I have this socket wrench set to tighten or loosen? That's 10 times more important for impacts or breaker bars. The last thing you want to do is summon the might of the God of Thunder, trying to turn a bolt just to shear it off at the head because you were going the wrong way. This goes hand in hand with my next point, and that is simply to think. Before you pick up a tool, think, what am I doing? What am I trying to accomplish? Or what will happen if I remove this bolt? If you're installing a full system exhaust on a modern sport bike with a one-piece exhaust system, like the CB650R or XSR700, pulling that last supporting bolt out will cause somewhere between 15 and 25 pounds of metal to come crashing straight down. Is your hand clear? Is your head? What about screwdrivers? Is that a JIS screw or a normal one? Does the head match the bolt? These are a series of mental checks that you should do every time you turn a wrench. It might seem like overkill, but you'll thank me next time you're working on your bike and simply pausing to think before going full send on a wrench saves you time and pain. Patience. Patience is a tough one because as a job goes on longer and longer, you just want it to be done and it's really easy to get into that F it mindset. What's the torque spec for your header bolts? Eh, F it, it's good and tight, it's not going anywhere. Whoops, looks like your exhaust pipe fell off. Aren't you supposed to use a fresh crush washer every time you do an oil change? Eh, F it, it's fine. Huh, now you're leaking oil all over the track and gonna have to pay that cleaning fee. Have the patience to see a job through with the same level of care from start all the way to the end. Especially once the end is in sight. You're going to smell the oil in your new pipe burning as you start your bike up for the first time in your mind and just want to get there. But take it from me, nothing sucks more than having to go back over a step because you half-assed it. There are places where good and tight GNT for short, is okay, like seat bolts or mirrors, but if you're monkeying around with critical systems, it'll really pay dividends to break out that torque wrench and get that bolt into spec. Take it slow and have patience. Know when to walk away. Finally, my last piece of advice is to know when to walk away. Did you snap a bolt off in the frame? How about crimped a wire in your harness? If you're working on a project and make a big mistake, now's the time to stop digging. 
Don't try and drill the bolt out or solder the wire. Set your pride aside and admit that the job is beyond your skill and just take it to a pro. This also goes for some jobs that come up at standard service intervals. Do you have the tools and know-how to service your forks or check your valve clearances? How about something simpler like changing a tire? Personally, I'll never change a tire so long as I live because if I break the bead on my new tire, I'm out 150 bucks or more. But if the shop does it, well, that's on them, isn't it? Everybody out there's got a different threshold for where a task is out of their wheelhouse, but you need to have the self-awareness to just tap out before you do something you'll regret. Go ahead, ask me how I know. And there you have it, a handful of tips that I've collected over my years of wrenching on motorcycles. Hopefully these lessons will keep you from making the same mistakes that I did, because as a new rider, I really recommend you spend at least some time working on your bike. It's a really great way to get familiar with your ride, and it's a ton of fun as long as you're prepared, methodical, and humble about it. If not, it's going to be a painful slog through the nine circles of motorcycling hell, and you'll spend every second praying for the sweet release of death. On that note, I'm going to sign off, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Fact. The national animal of Scotland is the unicorn. Huh. I kind of thought it would be the Loch Ness Monster or some haggis in a kilt. Goodbye.